that there is this emerging science that we can kind of point to and verify. So we've done our inventory, we've built our balance sheet and our index, uh, we've maybe done some visioning, back casting on where we are, where we want to be. We, we produce a state of well-being report. Uh, we have an, an online survey that's open all the time, right, as a uh, happiness initiative is done. And then we embed it into the budgeting and planning process. And we're doing that in Edmonton. The chief economist three years ago hired me. He said, I want a GPI for Edmonton. I said, for what purpose, Paul? He said, for forecasting and budgeting. Can do. We can now demonstrate return on taxes for changing well-being. We can say, when you invest in these programs and services, you get a well-being dividend. Mm -hmm. And politicians love that. Any politician wants to know, am I getting value for taxes? We're serious about happiness. Uh, we're serious enough to know that there is a direct relationship between budgets and well-being. There are, there are costs to inequality. And the most important thing that we have, of course, is the relationships we have with each other. Economics has hoodwinked us and convinced us that we're independent utility maximizing creatures, which is a lie. And that the more we get together, actually the happier we'll be. And we can, we can formalize that in our decisions, whether it's corporate or, or in our communities. <laughs>